Welcome aboard everybody, it's Captain D. It is January 3rd, 2020 and we are flying the Cessna 210 today and we are going to go from... We're traveling today from Huntingboro to KP, KTIP. The audio got a little wonky here so I just did a little bit of uh, narration. Total flight time today will be about an hour. It's about 135 nautical miles to the northwest as you can see looking out the window conditions are not that great so we are going to simulate IFR today unfortunately there is no VATSIM ATC on in this area at this time so we're just going to simulate it putting in the flight plan here on the GTN we're gonna go to clown Victor 11, Skodo, Victor 171 to Jazzy, Victor 404 to MT. And depending on the weather, closer to our destination, we'll choose a approach. Our options are runway 9 or runway 27. The wind is light and variable, so I think we will taxi to 27 and take 27 and that just puts us at a better on course hitting and we'll go taxi to do the run up let's get the ATIS hunting big weather wind light and variable visibility 2 rain sky conditions 400 overcast temperature 1 0 2.10 altimeter 2975 all right light and variable visible visibility two miles with a 400 foot ceiling all right no ATIS so we'll go no ATC so we'll go to Unicom Huntingburg traffic, Cessna 210, November 21 Delta Alpha, taxiing runway 27, Huntingburg. I guess we'll just do our run up on the runway. This intersection put us quite a way, quite a distance from the end of the runway, but I think we can still make it from here. So we'll go ahead and do an intersection takeoff. We'll just throw in a notch of flaps. Huntingburg traffic, Cessna 210 taking runway 27, IFR departure to the north. One left back to right back to both carb heat off. All right, flight controls free and correct. We have rudder authority, trims are set for takeoff. No one notch of flaps. Huntingburg traffic, Cessna 210 departing runway 27, Huntingburg. Release the brakes. 
increase the throttle. There's 40 knots, 50 knots, 60 knots, 70, 80, a little bit of back pressure, fly right off the runway. Flaps are coming up. Hunting bird traffic, Cessna 210, departing the area, turning to the north, hunting bird. All right, we are now above the 400 feet and in IMC. Climbing at about 75 knots. Alright, then we just broke out of the top here. Looks like tops were at about 3,000. Right now we got a 10 knot headwind, but that's going to change as we make our turn north. We're going to back off the throttle down to top of the green on the manifold pressure. Should also put us at top of the green on the fuel flow. We're going to leave the arc props full forward for a better climb. And if we were on an ATC route, we would want to go to 124.77 so we'll just put that in here for simulation purposes 12477 transfer gets us on the Indianapolis A track and we would contact approach or Indianapolis Center so Indianapolis Center, November 2-1 Delta Alpha, climbing through 5,700 for 10,000. Want to pick up our IFR. And then they would read back our instructions, and we're just going to assume that they would give us as filed, climb and maintain 12,000, and we'll pick a squat code here of 2655. Enter. So I hope everybody's having a good start to the new year. I know it has been a few months since I put out a video. Things towards the end of the year for me get rather busy. But are starting to slow down again. So hopefully I will be able to get to consistently put out videos. Um, I'm going to work on a weekly basis. Getting them out to either Friday or Saturday. Depending on how long editing takes. And as always, if you have any requests for certain flights or certain planes, just put them down in the comments. If I have the plane, I'd be more than willing to do the flight. If I don't have the plane, I'd still, you know, like to take a, uh, suggestions for flights so I'm not flying in the same areas all the time, making the same video over and over. This year I plan to do a lot of uh, general aviation f videos as well as some commercial airliners and maybe some shared cockpit with some friends as well as added ATC with both Pilot Edge and uh, 
the voice fat sim. If you haven't tried out that vo voice fat sim, it is, in my opinion, just just about as good as Pilot Edge. The only difference is Pilot Edge has constant coverage in the areas that they cover. However, they don't cover the majority of the country, so it's nice to sometimes be able to get ATC outside of the uh, California, Washington, Oregon, Idaho area. We're about 25 miles from Clown, and then we are going to make a northbound turn. We are climbing through 8,300 now. I have increased our altitude to 12,000 here. Lean it out a little bit. We're climbing 95 knots indicated airspeed mode, giving us about a climb rate of 800 feet a minute, which at this altitude for this plane is perfect. The wind has picked up quite a bit right now. The GTN is showing we're getting a uh, 28 knot quartering headwind, but when we make that northbound turn, that quartering headwind should turn into a quartering tailwind and uh, give us a little bit of a boost. At this speed, our estimated time en route is 1 hour 35 minutes, but that's kind of uh, irrelevant because once we get up to cruising altitude, we'll obviously go faster than 95 knots. Alright, I switched over to vertical speed at 800. And that brings us a little over 100 knots. We're above the clouds, but forward visibility is still pretty hazy. Climbing through 10,000 with 2,000 to go. And then after clown, clown to Skoto is a more north and then we make another turn to the uh, back to the west so it's going to be kind of a zigzag flight today Alright, passing through 11,900 with 100 to go. This is an X-Plane 10, Cessna 210, and I've noticed sometimes it has a hard time holding the altitude, so we'll just have to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Usually it tries to hold it like 100 feet above, or I've seen it go as high as 300 feet above. It doesn't seem to be consistent because you try to adjust the autopilot to, to match it, and it changes. Right now, it seems to be holding 12,000 pretty well as we pick up some speed. Watching the clock on the estimated time to destination wind down. hundred and fifty nine knots hundred and sixty knots over the ground that should improve as soon as we make this turn now that we're in cruise we're gonna go ahead and pull the prop back to 2400 rpm Cylinder head temperatures are good, manifold pressure top of the green, fuel flow looks good, oil pressures and temps look good.
and we're going to make a right turn to zero four, zero three four degrees. So just for added protection, we're going to put our heading on at zero three four degrees. making the turn, climbing a little bit above 12,000. We'll see if it comes back down. Alright, and that's going to turn into a 40 knot quartering tailwind, which will be nice when we're going northbound, but it's going to be a pain when we're going westbound. In my experience, it is not very often that you fly westbound and get a tailwind. Alright, our next frequency is going to be 132.2 if we were on an ATC plan. And we would pick that right up at about Skodo. So we'll put that in the standby. All right, on course. We're about 400 feet high. I'm still waiting to see if the autopilot's gonna gonna bring it back down. We're getting 225 knots over the ground. 30 knot um, quartering tailwind a little bit. Um, puts our in route time at 36 minutes. Although I'm not really going to trust that because once we turn northbound, that wind's going to go away. Or westbound, I'm sorry. We are northbound. Right? 130 nautical miles to go. That's the nice thing about the 210 is it can handle the higher altitudes and still give you that that added speed. Alright, the autopilot still seems to be holding us at uh, about 450 feet high. So I'm going to try and just push the nose down and bring it back down to 12,000 and see if it'll hold it. about 150 feet to go now I released the pressure and the plane just wants to climb so we'll see if it levels back back down or not <laughs> climbs almost all the way back up to 500 feet Just some little quirks I've noticed using uh, X Point 10 aircraft and X Point 11. Now, if it still wants to climb up that extra f couple hundred feet, so what I'm going to try now is to bring it down, bring the altitude selector down 300 feet. and see what happens. Initially it tries to climb. So 
so it doesn't want to drop either, it just wants to continue to climb. So I disengage the altitude hold, push the nose down. Try to just do vertical speed down 700 feet a minute and see what happens. So in that amount of time that I was playing with the autopilot, we've climbed almost a thousand feet. Now it seems to be descending, not at the 700 I selected, but it is descending. the altitude again. Alright, now we're back down to 12,500. We'll see where it levels out here. at 11,700 to see if it would keep it from climbing that extra 300, 350 feet. If we were actually dealing with ATC, they would be complaining that we're breaking our altitude. So what I'm trying to do is determine where you have to set it to make the plane do what I want it to do, so I can fly it online without having to worry about breaking the altitudes. All right, and we're making the turn at Scoto. And this is where we would get our handoff to 132.2. And we would check in Indianapolis Center, November 21 Delta Alpha, 12,200 descending 12,000. then they would acknowledge a radar contact and give us any instruction, which would probably just be maintain 12,000 and resume on course. We're going to lose a lot of our speed here because our 38 knot tailwind just became a 38 knot side wind out of the west. Our estimated time en route up to 35 minutes. There's 12,000. Now we'll see if it goes down to the 11,700 and then climbs back up. We've got 94 miles to go. Our ground speed has dropped to 165 knots. We got about a 6 degree crab angle here for the wind. Alright, now we're coming up on 11,700, which is where I set the autopilot to stop. It looks like it's going to level off and then climb back up. So we'll see what happens. The mystery continues. Quick check of the instruments. Fuel flows looking good increase the fuel flow just a little bit the manifold pressures drop quite a bit we can add some throttle here top of the grain fuel flow matches 2400 on the rpm
climbing to 11,900. I think we're still too far out to pick up the ATIS, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah, nothing. Well, that's a little bit better. Altitude seems to have stopped at about uh, 12,075 feet. So, we'll leave it there for now. Alright, at Kilo Tango India Papa, we have four runways. We have 0, 09, 1, 8, 2, 7, and 3, 6. As soon as we get close enough to get the ATIS, we'll determine which runway we're going to land on and hopefully find some kind of approach and do a, do a practice approach even if it is visual. Always good to have something in there for the backup anyways. Alright, once we get to TTH, we make a slight turn northbound the wind has died down a little bit it's only 18 knots now we're getting 187 over the ground with 2415 for estimated time en route I don't think our oil temperature and cylinder head temperature gauges are actually doing anything they're still pegged cold But oil pressure seems to be good. No indications of an overheating engine. If we go over here and take a look at the placards for max power settings and minimum fuel flows. You can go up to 36.5 inches of manifold pressure. Max continuous power is 2600. And right now we are... at about 2700, so maybe we should back that off a little bit. There we go. Back over to the pilot side. Take a look here at our moving map. And we are headed to Jazzy to make our final turn westbound to MT and then our approach into the airport. We're at 62 miles. We'll see if we can get the ATIS. And that's a negative. Usually it's about 50 miles, but I always like to try and see if I can figure out just when I can get it. MEAs on this airway go all the way down to 2,500 feet.
we'll start our descent when we pass Jazzy here in about 15 miles. Right after Jazzy, we also go from Indianapolis Center to Chicago. And that frequency is going to be 55. Let's see if we can get the ATIS. Rand tool. Chanute AFB weather. Wind light and variable. Visibility 5. Sky condition 700 overcast. Temperature 3. Dew point 2. Altimeter 2979. Alright, so light and variable, which means if there's an approach, we can just pick which one we want here. So. Let's take a look. There's an RNAV to zero 09, an RNAV to 18. If we go into 18, we'll have to go over the airport and back around. If we go into 19, it is a little bit west of our position. If we go into 3.6 it's almost a straight in. So let's just go for the 3.6. Alright, at Bellamy, which is our initial approach fix where we turn on course, we want to be at 3000. So we're going to start our descent. down to 3,000. According to the GTN, vertical speed required is 530 feet. plane is trying to climb instead of descend. What's going on? Adjust the vertical speed there. Okay, now it seems to be descending. So the autopilot altitude doesn't do a very good job in this plane. We're just going to have to push the nose down. Activate the approach, go direct Bellamy. So at Bellamy we're going to do a four mile hold course reversal. And we want to do that at 3,000 feet. The plane seems to descend better on the autopilot using an indicated airspeed option, so I'll just try to use the speed to match what we need. This approach is climbed to 3000 direct. Five. 
We are 42 miles out. Descending through 9,000. Alright, pitot heat is on for when we pass through the clouds. Outside air temperature is below freezing, so passing through the clouds we could pick up some ice. We're going to go back to the ATIS here and check the uh, ceilings. Rantoul, Chanute AFB weather. Wind light and variable, visibility 5. Sky condition 700 overcast, temperature 3, 2.2. Altimeter 2979. 700. Well, that's going to be interesting because the uh, airport elevation is 738 feet. So we'll see what happens. We may end up going missed and finding an alternate. I went ahead and took out the uh, hold at Bellamy. We don't really need it for what we're doing. Rantoul traffic, Cessna 210, November 21 Delta Alpha is 1-4 miles out on the RNAV approach to runway 36. Rantoul. Alright, turn right to 003 degrees. Arm the approach. Complete IMC. Hopefully, we'll break out. Right about here as we continue to descend, we're still in the clouds, only a couple of miles to the airport. I was starting to think that we possibly weren't going to get in and have to go to our alternate. But I decided, seems how minimums here were 300 feet, we would go ahead and uh, just go down to minimums and see if we popped out. Just continue to follow the approach plate with the GTN and also on the uh, moving map there. Right now we are holding altitude waiting for the approach to kick in and start the descent. The approach is armed. On the approach, and here we go. Still haven't the broken out. Down. Start slowing down. 
getting lower and lower and we're still in IMC. Three miles to the runway, still haven't broke out. And we're relying completely on the autopilot and our instruments here to ensure that we get down the minimums. Right here we're at about a thousand feet. And there we go, we broke out, runway in sight, gear coming down. One green, two green, three green. First notch of flaps. Coming down, a little bit of throttle, keep the speeds up. There's minimums, runway in sight. <coughs> Autopilot off. And we're going to go around because we weren't lined up very well. Make our downwind turn, keep it at about a thousand feet.
Well, that was an okay approach, but we were off track too much. And by the time I disconnected the autopilot and lined it up, there wasn't enough room to stop. So we're going around. Base turn. Shot my final turn there. That's not good. Three green. Make sure full props full. made my radio calls just as practice but I didn't looking for a windsock because there seemed to be well it looks pretty limp but there seemed to be a little bit of a crosswind on that landing Breaks. All right, aircraft secure. We made it. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like the video, please remember to like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, fly safe and thanks for riding along.